All right, how's it going, Neil? So Unify 9.1 is finally the release candidate, and they heard you wanted more WAN with your WAN, and so they have fully unlocked the ability to have almost limitless WAN ports rather than the just two you've had before, as well as some really great other features like simpler QoS, as well as just some really great quality of life improvements, letting you see what is going on with traffic flow, how your SFP modules are going, and the ability to copy firewall rules. There's so many just little quality of life improvements with this update that is going to be really nice for a lot of people who are working on these systems all the time, like me, and just being able to detect and figure out problems way, way, way easier. So as I said, it is currently in release candidate. So we're on RC, so your mileage may vary with this update, so don't update critical systems, obviously, but it is also just the network application, not the actual OS. So it is generally safer as the OS is the part that actually does the routing. And from my testing, I've not seen any major issues. Normally, by the time it gets released, candidate, it's pretty stable. Unify has been adopting a pretty darn stable policy recently, where when it goes full release, it tends to be very, very, very stable. And even the release candidates have been pretty decently tested already. And so we're going to start by checking out the release notes for this. And it is 9118. And there's also currently what I'm running on my machine is 91119 which has some very minor improvements and bug fixes from this version. And right here, we can see at the top, the big three one right here are traffic flows, enhanced QoS, and multi-WAN, which are all things people have been asking for. And so Unify has been doing this all over the place. They really start off with, hey, let's cover the features that 99% of users need. And then after they've really nailed that down, they go in and start adding in that 99.9 and keep adding those nines to really cover pretty much all edge cases for things you might need. And I think the multi-WAN option is a great example of that. So we pop into this demo unit right here I've got. We can see that previously, you would have not been able to add more than just two WAN ports because the vast majority of users don't need more than two WAN ports. However, now, for those people who do, who have multiple ISPs, who are dropping it in a co-location facility and need to be able to really handle a lot of things, well, now you can just add almost an arbitrary value of WAN ports, which is great. You just keep adding them on in, and now you can load balance and you can choose however you want to add those on in, and it just makes it so much easier to work with. So if I wanted to on this Gateway Max right here, I can go ahead and add a third WAN and just choose whatever port I want to use and have it set up. And you can just go through, add each of those on in and choose how you want to load balance, how you want to add in which one has the higher priorities and pretty much anything you want to do. I think it's very useful and let you just really kind of decide what you need and what you're looking for. And while the vast majority of users do not need more than two WANs, those who do will now just be able to do this really easily and that's where unify is really killing it, in my opinion is just getting those extra features on in there for those edge cases and making it not a hey if it works for you it works great but rather a hey it's probably going to work for you they've also cleaned up their traffic flows and this is something i think is going to be really useful and personally i've run into some issues where honestly from my testing, not all blocks were ending up in our logs. And so sometimes you'd have things being blocked. You wouldn't realize why the packet was dropping. And then it would turn out to be a firewall rule issue. And this is where with the traffic flows, they're going to add in much more information where you can actually see entire packets for every single piece right here. And you can see exactly what has and has not been allowed, which is really useful. However, we're not going to be able to demo it here as we do not yet have Unify OS 4.2.8. I am currently running 4.1.22, which is in RC. And it even lets you store these on an external hard drive, which is absolutely awesome. So you'll be able to add that in. And there's just going to be a lot of really great things that are going to be put in there that I am excited to test out and see. Then we've got our quality of service rules. So if you don't know what QoS is, QoS is the ability to actually route your traffic in priority lanes. So great example are phone calls. That is always the number one thing to use QoS with, where let's say you've got some massive file transfers going on and somebody's on a phone call and it's using IP phone. Well, 
that IP phone is going to have a lot of very small packets that really are not going to take up too much of your overall bandwidth, but they're very, very, very important. As if those get slowed down, the phone call starts breaking up. It either works or it doesn't. Then on the flip side, the download, that can take up massive amounts of bandwidth, but if it all of a sudden drops to even 10% less or half as fast, it's not a big deal. Downloads just kind of happen at whatever download speeds there are. So that's what QoS does. QoS allows you to say, hey, if you see any phone traffic, put that at the front line. Make sure it doesn't get jammed up by the firewall. And so that way, the stuff that's really fast and latency sensitive gets done as soon as possible. And stuff that is really just complete whenever needed, like a large file download, it happens on its own time. And that's really important because if you're downloading a large file, it can take up your entire bandwidth very easily, meaning that that phone call just can't get packets in and you start dropping phone calls and things like that. This is really a lot more of a case for people who do not have fiber internet, who are stuck on slower connections where really downloading a file can wipe you out. If you have an internet connection over one gigabit or even one gigabit, you probably do not need this unless you're talking about a really big office with a lot of people who are all on phone calls and downloading files because in general, it should be fast enough to handle it. But if you're on a slower connection, this can be a huge improvement and there's tons of pieces in here. So we can come in and go into their routing section and the QoS is now cleaned up where you can say, hey, I want to prioritize critical traffic really simply. So you literally just say, hey, what apps do you want to prioritize? Do you want to prioritize it only on certain devices? Do you want to choose a specific interface and a schedule? And that is how easy it is to add the stuff on in here. And if we look at this note right here, it's important to see that if you come down here, if you're going over one gigabit, adding in your QoS can start actually having an impact. And that's where if you're routing fast enough and there's not an issue, you don't need to enable this, especially if you're already having a very fast connection. And so if you are trying to enable this, you do kind of need to over beef your router. So if it's rated for maybe doing two gigabits of throughput, now with QoS, you might have a 25 to 40% adjustment. So now maybe it can only reliably route at 1.2 gigabit with QoS. So that is a really important consideration and why those big, crazy, powerful units that can route at 10 gigabit speeds that Unify has actually become more reasonable because even if you don't have 10 gigabit, you might be doing a lot more routing with QoS and having that extra CPU horsepower is really nice for those kinds of cases. But to be fair, if you have five gigabit, you probably don't need QoS. And furthermore, you can also choose other options here. So if you want to limit certain things because, well, you just want to make sure that they don't take up too much space or you want to make sure your kid's not streaming too much on YouTube or whatever you want to do, you can actually go ahead and limit that and even prioritize and limit things where you can say, hey, I want to make sure this goes fast, but to a certain extent, which is great. If you have a use case for that, you can absolutely do it. And then there's also a generic QoS here that allows you to just do whatever you want. Really, this guy is just a template. So that's QoS, and especially for people who have slower connections and have a lot of office IP phones, this will be a welcome improvement. As I said earlier, we've got our multi-WAN support, which is absolutely phenomenal, and it is actually limited to eight WANs. If you have more than eight WANs, I'm going to be absolutely shocked, and you have a very interesting connection, and maybe you're doing something like BGP on the other end, which might work great for like a campus network, but that is a super niche case where I don't see a lot of people, even in the massive, massive, massive campuses, hitting those higher and higher numbers as you just end up having more of a hub and spoke than having tons and tons and tons of stuff. But I think eight is great. And especially if you're looking for somebody who wants to be able to combine multiple network connections, like you are trying to run a concert stream on Starlink. It's really common to have an LTE, a Starlink, a other options that all allow you to kind of pick whatever best case scenario there is. And so that way, if one of them drops, you don't lose the entire stream, which is really common in concert streaming. And then one of the things I'm really excited for is this improved port manager, specifically for this SFP analyzer. If you've had to debug issues or investigate SFP modules on Unify, it has been tough. 
because you would have to hover over in the upper right hand corner this tiny view and then you could not see them anywhere else where you needed to understand what module was plugged in. Now, this is the view you can get to. You go to this SFP analyzer and just right here you say, hey, this is everything. These are your serial numbers. This is the exact type of SFP connection you've got. So I've got these DAC cables right here. You can see the vendor. You can see what speed everything is running at. You can see your errors. You can see your temperatures. You can see everything that's reported back. And so if you're trying to debug something, so, hey, this thing is getting really hot. Why is it getting hot? Maybe that's why it's dropping traffic. Maybe that's why I'm having a connection issue. Seeing errors here is so, so, so useful. I'm really happy with this. And it makes looking at your DAC cables and your SFP modules and everything hooked up, those connections so much easier instead of looking at a tiny view where you had to just scroll over it. This is a huge quality of life improvement for me. And I'm sure it will be for a ton of people who are deploying fiber optic equipment. You can also see now that the port configuration is now a popover on the side. And that just helps by not covering up information because you've got your actual switch configuration right here that you see everything on. And then on the right hand side, you do your settings. Really happy with that. It's just gonna make life a lot easier. And anybody who used the old view kind of knew you're trying to see which port you're hooking up. You kind of scroll up, scroll down, and it just wasn't very fluid. And a popover on the side, I think, is just the most reasonable thing to do because you don't need that much width for these settings. These settings take up a very small amount and fit in a nice column very easily. All right, and then finally, there's a few other key things I'm just going to point out here. Um, one of the big ones that I actually am surprised is this low is the ability to just replace a device. So you've got a faulty switch or it's just breaking and you need it replaced. Well, previously, you would pretty much just replace it and then have to copy over the configs and do it. Now, all you do is you just say, hey, this is the new MAC address. And next time it connects, it just imports the old configuration and switches them over. It's just going to be one of those little quality of life things that makes it a lot easier. We also have a great option for finally adding cloud layer support for DDNS. So I know that's a huge thing. I've been waiting for it too, where you can actually just use Cloudflare's DDNS to update your public IP address. And primarily what I use for DNS is Cloudflare. So it will be very welcome. I always felt like it was surprising that it was so lacked here. We also are going to be getting traffic statistics from layer three switch networks, which is going to be awesome. Not had a chance to test that yet, but being able to see where everything is routing, I think is going to be very useful. Then scrolling on down, we can go all the way down to our firewall. And this is one thing I really want to point out here is they've got the ability finally to duplicate a firewall rule, which I know sounds like a very small thing, but it's really useful when you're writing them out and it always felt odd that you had to like literally go through and just recreate it and try to remember everything. I was always swapping back and forth. Now there's just a little copy button at the bottom where you can come in here, you go to your firewall rule, and we can come in here, we can reorder policies, we can pop in, we can go in, we can create something. And now we can go in here, we hit manage, click on it, and just duplicate it. And now we've got a copy of it where we can go ahead and change a couple of settings on it. And we can say, hey, let's just specify it here. It just is so useful of little things like that rather than having to completely redo it and try to remember all of your settings over there. It's just nice to be able to copy the firewall over and the reordering as you saw there is way easier as well. And finally with Wi-Fi, there's a couple of quality of life improvements. The biggest thing I think is probably the ability to actually go through and change the default channel widths. When you're setting up channel widths, it's really kind of a choice between are you trying to get the fastest possible speeds to a single device or are you trying to have good just general Wi-Fi? And they're kind of opposites because the wider you are, the more interference you're going to be dealing with and the easier it is to drop a connection and the lower range you have. And then the narrower you are, the slower the connection will be. In general, I tend to recommend a narrower band for most people unless you've got tons of devices and really need a bunch of connection because having really cool speed of like, yeah, I can get 1.2 gigabit Wi-Fi, but that's only when you're directly below the access point is not that useful. In reality, when you're using Wi-Fi, you normally just want good Wi-Fi overall. So I'm happy with that. And then a whole bunch of bug fixes that nothing here I've really run into specifically, but now hopefully I will not run into any of these issues as they've all been fixed. All right, well, that is pretty much it for this overview. There's a bunch of stuff in here and 
I just really like the direction they're going. There's a whole lot of things in here that they've added while not making things more complicated, which is impressive in my opinion. Go ahead and leave down in the comments below any other unified tutorials you'd like me to make. I've been thinking about doing one on the new firewall rule, so let me know if you want to see that. And then, any other tutorials on that? And if you want to hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. And have a good one. Bye!